Hello everyone, welcome to the GraphQL tutorial. In this GraphQL tutorial, I am going to explain everything you need to know about GraphQL. We will start from the definition of GraphQL. After that, I will explain the difference between the REST API and GraphQL. I am going to create a recipe application with all the basic functionalities like CRUD operation, uh, user authentication, some other as well. I will explain all the basic concepts of GraphQL. I am uh, using Apollo server to create my GraphQL server and my database will be MongoDB. I will explain what the type definitions or schemas are, what the resolvers are, how you can implement JWT authentication and how we can handle errors in GraphQL. So without any further delay, let's get started. So what is GraphQL? GraphQL is a query language that we use alternative to REST API. Uh, GraphQL is not a module or any new language or package, it is just a query language. I am on the official website of uh, GraphQL that says that GraphQL is a query language for APIs. It has large number of new features that REST API doesn't. For example, it allows the client to select the data from its API. This animation on GraphQL website show all about what GraphQL is. This is my client that is requesting the data and this is my server that is returning the data. So this is the name of my query. In GraphQL we have to name our query. Like I am uh, requesting a query with name and requesting the API to return only the name of uh, my hero to me. Now let's move to the slides part to see GraphQL more in detail. So the GraphQL is designed by Facebook and it is a query language for our API. In GraphQL, we need to design our own data. GraphQL is a communication pattern that transfers data between client and server and it sits between our client and our backend services. I have this image that show what GraphQL is. These are all my GraphQL clients and this, this is my API that is my uh, server. And GraphQL sits between the client and the uh, backend services. GraphQL has a large number of new features like it enables a client to call only a single endpoint for many requests. Like we don't need to write large number of endpoints like we write in uh, REST API. We just need a single endpoint that is slash GraphQL and the, these, this endpoint does all our functionality for us. So the key points for GraphQL is uh, application using GraphQL are fast and stable because they control the data, not the server, as I have already mentioned. GraphQL is the smarter REST API, like the uh, client decides what data he need, so it is a smarter REST API. With GraphQL, you get the data what you accept. Uh, the next point says that it gives the client the power to ask for what they need and nothing more. In REST API, the client sometimes may get the overfetching and underfetching. Sometimes he or she get the more data than he required, or sometimes he get the less data than he is required. But in GraphQL, that doesn't that is not the case. In GraphQL, we get the data that we need only. It provides a complete and understandable description of your API. So this is how the GraphQL query looks like. We have to name our query that is our mutation and query here. I will explain uh, what uh, the query and mutation is in my upcoming videos. After that, we have to name our queries. Like here, I am uh, naming it as uh, uh, get user query. And this is the uh, query name that is user. And I am asking the GraphQL to return the first name, last name and email. Uh, it may have some more fields in the backend, but I am only need these fields. And as you can see in the result, it only provides me these fields in the result. Before moving further in slides, let me show you the real time example of how the GraphQL projects or application looks like that I have already created. So this is the uh, GraphQL query that I have already created. So I have to pass the uh, name of my query that is get recipes and we can also pass the variables in it. Like I am passing that I need 10 recipes. So this is uh, where the power of GraphQL comes. Like here it is returning I mean, ID, name, description created as thumbs up and thumbs down. 
at this point the graphql result is same as rest api result but here the power of graphql comes like i am selecting all the fields that i need id name description created at thumbs up and thumbs down but in graphql i can also select some of the fields that uh, for example i need uh, all the recipes id and the names i have to click on get our recipes and you can see it is returning only the id and the name of my recipes uh, what if i only need the id it is returning me the id what if i only need the description and it return me id and description of the uh, recipes so this is how the graphql query or project looks like so let's move back to the slides so some of the benefits that graph graphql provides us are that we can select uh, selective information from our endpoint as you have already seen client application can call the single app, uh, single endpoint for any type of data always get the predictable get in data as you can see uh, if i uh, need id and description the graphql query provides me only the id and description so we are getting the predictable data makes it easier to evolve gradu uh, develop gradually apis over time uh, apps using graphql are fast and stable uh, because uh, they control the data they get not the server so uh, the features of graphql are there are three main uh, things in graphql queries are used to request the data it is analogous to the get request in rest api mutations are used to manipulate the data like uh, we have to update delete or create the new data so we have to name our query as mutation and third one is subscription that rarely used so subscription are used to get real time updates within the application so these are three main things that uh, graphql have if you want to study some more about graphql you need to go to the graphql official website that is graphql.org and it provide with very helpful uh, information about graphql you can also go to code screen that provide you code in various different languages so this is just a brief overview of graphql and its uh, advantages disadvantages and uh, some other stuffs as we know rest is an architecture that stands for representational state transfer it is an application programming interface that conforms to the constraint of rest architecture in rest api we follow some constraint and that is called as uh, rest architecture but the graphql is a query language that sits between the client and the backend services so what are the similarities between the uh, rest api and graphql and uh, the similarity between rest api and graphql is that the both uh, graphql and rest api sends at http requests and receive at http responses so now we will discuss about the differences and uh, the uh, structure of uh, the rest api and graphql looks something like this in rest api we, uh, if we need all the posts we send the request to slash post and that return us all the posts that we have slash comments returns us all the comments that we have in uh, database and slash authors uh, returns us all the authors that we have in uh, database but the graph in graphql we have only a single endpoint we have only a single api that is slash graph graphql uh, if we need a uh, post we have to send uh, the uh, post as the name of query if we need all the comments if we need all the authors we just need to pass uh, comments and authors as name of query and graphql handles the uh, rest of the things and return us the result so uh, if we need all the users uh, in rest api we send the request to slash users and it, it returns us all the fields of all the users and if we need uh, a specific user with uh, id we need to send the request to slash users and slash id that is the uh, syntax that we are following from uh, several years uh, if we send uh, the request to slash I, uh, colon id and pass the id to our api it returns us all the fields of some particular user uh, similarly if we need uh, a book with id 123 we need to send a request to uh, slash books and pass id as parameter 
and the backend service that is uh, our api decides what data uh, the api will return the client has no uh, access to uh, decide what which fields of the api or which fields of the object he or she needs but in graphql we have only a single endpoint that is our graphql and we will pass the data as query string for example if we need title and author name of a book uh, in graphql the query looks something like this uh, we are sending the uh, get request by default the request in uh, graphql is get request we need to send the request to uh, slash graphql that is of a single endpoint and we will pass need to pass the data as query string uh, i am naming my query as book and passing the id 123 and i need uh, i need to specify what fields i need like I, I i want to get the title and author name so i have to pass the title and author name in it uh, in graphql we specify the resources we want and the fields we want so some of the key differences between the graphql and the rest api are uh, in REST API, the API throw all the information to you. Uh, some client may get more data and some client may uh, get uh, uh, less data. And th these concepts are called overfetching and underfetching. But in uh, GraphQL, we select only the specific field we need. We, are, uh, we do not get uh, uh, underfetching or overfetching of data. So that is the main advantage of GraphQL. Another difference between these two is GraphQL is uh, REST API is not flexible because of users of multiple endpoints to handle data. As you have already seen, we have to write multiple endpoints, slash post, slash comments, slash authors. But in GraphQL, we, uh, we have to write only single endpoint and these endpoints handle all the APIs for us. In GraphQL, client can call single API for any type of data. In REST API, client have to work to extract the fields. Uh, the API will return all the fields to client and client have to extract the fields he or she need. Uh, for example, if he needs only the name or only the description, uh, then he or, then he have to extract the data from uh, the result that the API throw. But in REST uh, in GraphQL, the clients get only the required field. Uh, the REST API is client uh, server driven, but the GraphQL is client driven. Uh, REST API has a wide range of options for automated documentation such as uh, Open API and API Blueprint. But uh, the GraphQL has only a single tool for documentation that is of GraphQL. GraphQL. If we are using the Express GraphQL, that is the package that we used in Node.js, then we have to pass the GraphQL uh, is equal to two. Uh, this will give us a user interface where we uh, where we do not need to uh, write um, the queries by ourselves. Uh, the GraphQL will write queries for us. Another key difference between two, these two is our error handling. Error handling in GraphQL is little bit, little bit complex because we always get 200 as status code. Uh, if the server throw uh, some error, we are still getting 200 status code. But in REST API, uh, we get 200 status code if the, uh, the client gets some result. And if the uh, backend API throw some error, we get uh, 400 or 500 as status code. Uh, let me show you how this work and uh, this is my login api uh, if i am passing the correct email and password it is returning 200 as status code and return id created at email first name and uh, some other fields uh, in my response but if i pass the invalid email you can see it is still uh, uh, it is still returning 200 as status code so the error handling in GraphQL is a little bit of complex. So these are some of the differences between uh, GraphQL and uh, REST API. Now I will give you overview of the application that we are going to create using GraphQL. We are going to create a REST API application with all the uh, CRUD application like create a new recipe, update a recipe, delete recipe and view all the recipes and all these APIs using GraphQL. And secondly, we are uh, going to implement the authentication routes like login and uh, sign up. Uh, when the user, when the new user create his account, we are uh, returning a JWT token to the user uh, with the user need to pass with every request. Uh, we will also see the uh, how we can do error handling in GraphQL. Uh, 
and some other stuff as well so these are all the apis like we can create a new recipe we can get our recipes and get uh, create a new user increment thumbs up login user get our users get a single recipe get a user by id and read recipe edit uh, recipe and increment thumbs up so uh, this is the uh, create a new uh, user uh, uh, query so uh, when i pass the email first name last name and password to the query it will create a new user and return a jwt uh, token to me which i need to pass with every request if i create uh, the user again it will throw the error that the email is already exist and also the status code uh, 400 uh, i will tell you uh, in after some time that how we can return the status code 400 in uh, uh, graphql we can also get all that our recipes we can select some fields from recipes we can also pass variables dynamic variables to our queries uh, some other apis are we can get all our users uh, if we need to get all our users we need to pass the jwt token in authorization uh, parameter uh, first of all i need to copy this token uh, if i create a new user uh, it will return a token to me and i need to copy this i can also log in from here from the login route if i pass the new token to the uh, authorization and, and get our user then it will return me all the users so these are all the features that we are going to implement after some time in graphql as you can know we can also select some of our fields like if i get uh, if i need the id email password and first name of uh, our users i can also get these if i need to verify my token jwt token i need to go to jwt.io website and i need to also paste my token here if i paste my token here it will uh, decode the token and uh, give the id uh, email uh, expiry date and created date uh, of the token i am using mongodb atlas as my database and apollo server studio to send the request to graphql server now i will explain how we can implement all these features in graphql before start writing starting writing uh, graphql code we have to take some decisions first first of all we need to choose our graphql server there are different options available for uh, our graphql server uh, the first one is using the express graphql second one is using the apollo server and third one is using the graphql yoga if i go to the uh, official website of graphql and go to the code screen and scroll a little bit uh, it you can see all the uh, options available to uh, create over graphql server the first of all the first option is the using graphql js we need to build uh, our schema first after that we need to uh, write our resolvers the second one is using the apollo server and third one is the apollo yoga there are some others as well but the most famous of all is apollo server the main advantage of uh, apollo server is uh, we can separate our resolvers and schema uh, from each other and the another advantage of using apollo server is uh, the uh, server can easily communicate with the front end uh, client uh, we need to install the apollo server on backend and apollo client on front end and both front end and backend can easily communicate with each other uh, these are the packages that we need to install first of all we need to install the apollo server dot env graphql that is required for using the graphql graphql tag and json web token that we will uh, need uh, for jwt authentication and mongoose and uh, that is required for uh, interacting with mongodb first of all we need to uh, import all these modules we need to import the apollo server from apollo server secondly we need to import a standalone server uh, because in uh, graphql server we are not uh, using express uh, uh, to create our web application we are using the uh, graphql server 
after that we need to import mongoose uh, all the resolvers i will explain uh, what these resolvers and what this type definition in a while and the context context is uh, like uh, our middleware that is called before and after each request after that we need to create our apollo server we need to pass all our type definitions resolvers and uh, the uh, interception uh, true to the apollo server here i am making the connection with my mongodb atlas I need to pass the uh, MongoDB uh, URL uh, to the MongoDB connect uh, that I have stored in the environment variable file. When the connection with the, the MongoDB uh, is successfully created, I need to return a standalone server from here. I need to pass the server, the listen and the context to uh, as a parameter uh, to the standalone server. When it is successfully uh, when our, the server is successfully running, I need to run the npm start command. It will take some time and start my server. Uh, first of all, it is connected to MongoDB and show me a message that the server is ready at port uh, 3000. I need to click on the URL and it will take me to the uh, Apollo Server Studio where uh, I have written all my endpoints. Now we will see the major components of our GraphQL. They are two major components. First one is type definition and second one is our resolvers. Type definition is schema that uh, as we are using the schema first approach. So we need to define our schema first, then we need to write the resolvers. We need to pass all our type definitions and all our resolvers to Apollo server. We can also create a single file uh, with all our type definitions and uh, a single file with all our resolvers. But I am uh, creating a separate file because it is easier to handle. I have created a folder card schema and uh, created a different uh, uh, created different files for uh, schemas of uh, uh, recipe users and uh, other things as well. In my type definitions folder, I have created schema for user and SP. For user, I need to specify all the fields like and the user type is user can contain ID that will be string, email, password, first name, last name, uh, following that is uh, the array of strings and created at and updated. At. For SP, uh, the type of SP is ID, name, description, uh, created at thumbs up and thumbs down. You can write all these types in single file as well. In my users, uh, user schema uh, file, I need to specify what the, uh, input the sign up, uh, uh, the sign up route can accept. Uh, for example, uh, it needs uh, email, password, uh, first name and last name. The exclamation marks mean that all these are required. Uh, this is syntax uh, that we use in GraphQL. For uh, login input, we need uh, the email and password and both of these are required. Uh, after defining all our types and uh, in inputs, we need, to, uh, we need to write two special types here. First one is type query and second one is type mutation. Any GraphQL request can be of type query and of type mutation. The query uh, is similar to the get request in REST APIs. If we need to fetch some data from uh, our server, then we need to specify it as query in GraphQL. But if we want to update or modify or write our data to the server, we need to specify it as mutation. Uh, like this is application that I have created. Uh, I need to specify it as query because we are uh, reading uh, our users from server. I need to specify it as query. But if I need to create a new user, I need to specify it as mutation. So these are two main concepts in GraphQL schema. Uh, uh, after writing the type uh, query, I need to write the schema of all our queries. For example, this can be my query like uh, get uh, user by name i need what it can take as an argument for example it can take a name from user 
and what is can return is user this type of user i have already defined in my type definition like this is a type so it is returning a user object with id email password first name and so on so i need to specify all my queries in the query type and they are two queries uh, users query first of all is get users that is taking uh, our total uh, a variable with name to total that is integer and return an array of users the second one is get user by id that is taking the id of user from the client and returning a user here i am have written exclamation mark which means it will uh, surely return a user else it will return some it will throw some error uh, for mutation i need to uh, write all the mutations in type mutation there are two mut main mutations uh, in my case first one is login and the second one is sign up and uh, the login is accepting uh, input of type uh, login input from user the uh, i have i also need to write the login input type uh, before the type mutation <coughs> like this is my input type i have uh, specified is as it as input type and it will return the login result here i i have used union uh, of graphql uh, it can return a user with token or invalid credential error uh, for uh, sign up uh, i am accepting uh, sign up input from user and returning user with token to the user Similarly, uh, I have uh, I need to specify the schema for resolver. First of all, I specified the recipe input uh, and all the queries uh, that uh, the related to uh, recipe and mutations related to recipe. And there are two uh, two main queries related to recipe. First one is uh, get recipe by ID, and a second one is uh, get recipes. This is the name that I need to pass here. Like this is sign up, and I need I have written it uh, the name of uh, my mutation as sign up, and th these are all my mutations related to recipe. Uh, first one is create recipe, delete recipe, edit recipe, increment uh, thumbs up and increment thumbs down, uh, and uh, I need to specify the return type also. So after writing the schemas for uh, uh, user and recipe. I have imported all the files in my index.schema file and export all these as an array. And in my index.js file, I am importing uh, the array in uh, uh, all type definitions and passing it to uh, the type, def uh, type definition parameter. I can also write the file names here as well. So after uh, defining the type definitions, I need to write the resolvers uh, uh, for each the type definition. As we know, there are two major components of any GraphQL application. First one is type definition and second one is resolvers. In type definitions, we define the structure of our types, our input type, our output type and the type of our Q and query and mutation. I have already created my type definitions in my schema folder. I have changed my type definition uh, to make it a little bit more easier. This is my recipe type and this is my uh, query type that has recipe uh, recipe that return the single recipe and get recipes that return an array of recipe and the mutation uh, where I can uh, update uh, delete or create a new recipe in my user schema i have defined the input type for sign up and uh, login and the queries for get users and get a user by id after that i have created the types for mutations uh, that is my login and sign up now it's time for write over resolvers uh, in our resolvers functions we will uh, create the uh, actual definitions of these types uh, we need to pass all of our resolvers in an array uh, to the parameter resolvers. I have created a separate file for resolvers of recipe and users and imported both of the files in a separate file uh, called index.resolvers and pass uh, this array to the resolvers parameter. 
so this is my resolver uh, folder first uh, we will look into uh, user resolvers all the resolver functions whether they are mutations or whether they are uh, queries take four arguments the first one is parent second one is arguments third one is context and the fourth one is information so the uh, parent arguments contain the result returned from the resolver on parent field second one the arguments are the arguments that are passed in the query context is the object shared by our resolvers this object is shared by our resolvers and third one is the information that contains information about the execution of state of query whether it is completed or in pending state here we needs only the second argument that is our arguments uh, i am destructuring by args object like this and getting the total variable that is my total number of users from the arguments and simply queuing my user table to return me total number of arguments and return all the the array of all the users so this is my first query in my second query i am taking the id of user from the client and checking if the user with id exists or not if it exists then i am returning the user to the client so these are two queries for my user for mutation part i need to write these two mutations first one is login that take login input and second one is uh, sign up that uh, takes sign up input and both of these return a user with authentication token that is our jwt token this is the type definition of uh, user with token so this mutation uh, similar to the query takes four arg four arguments i am destructuring the args object and uh, getting the input then i am further destructuring the input object and getting the email password first name and last name that the user passed then i am calling my helper function to check if the email is already exist or not if the email is already exist then i am throwing the error that uh, the email is already registered i will discuss about this uh, custom error handling later so uh, when if the uh, user uh, email that the user passed does not exist then i need to create a new user create a new jwt token for the user and return all the information to the user uh, that contains uh, the user information that i just stored in database and the token uh, for login similar to the sign up uh, i am getting the email and password from the user uh, matching the email and password to my database records if the uh, user exists then uh, i am getting the jwt token and returning the token and the user information to the uh, client if the user does not exist then i am throwing the invalid uh, email or password of the user so let's uh, jump to the recipe resolvers recipe resolver is also simple similar to the user resolver Uh, firstly uh, we will write the queries related to the uh, recipe resolver that takes four four arguments and uh, that i have already explained uh, if the uh, and the recipe with or and uh, the id the user passed is already exist then i am returning all the information to the user if the recipe with the id does not exist then i am throwing the custom error that the recipe with this id does not exist similarly for get recipes i am getting an amount and returning all recipes an array of recipe to the uh, client let's check the uh, type definition of uh, uh, recipe schema so these are two types and these are five uh, mutations that i need to write uh, create recipe takes a recipe input and return that recipe after storing it to database similarly delete recipe and gets a uh, takes accept an id from uh, client and return a recipe success 
recipe success is a type that contains a message that shows whether the recipe is successfully deleted or not and is success a, a boolean variable that shows uh, if the uh, uh, recipe is successfully deleted or not similarly for edit recipe uh, increment thumbs up and increment uh, thumbs down all of these mutations are uh, same let's move back to the uh, recipe resolver now I need to write the uh, mutations for the resolver. Firstly, I am creating a new recipe that is taking a recipe input. I am destructuring it to get the name and description, storing all the information in database and returning it to the user. Now I am uh, creating a mutation for delete recipe that is taking the input from user. If the recipe does not exist, I am throwing the error. If the re uh, recipe already uh, exists, then I am deleting the recipe. Similarly, for edit recipe, uh, increment thumbs up and increment thumbs down. So let's uh, test all these uh, features. I move back to my uh, Apollo server uh, sandbox. Let's test the login user. I need to pass I need to pass the email and the password. If the uh, email and password are correct, the uh, GraphQL will return me the fields that I mentioned and my JWT token. If I pass the invalid email here, it will throw an error that the uh, invalid email or password entered. And also you can see it is returning a status code of 400. We will uh, look into the error handling later. Let's test another endpoint that is getting a single recipe. For this, I need to pass in the JWT token. Let's log in the user again. Copy this token and pass it is in authorization parameter that uh, that will pass in the headers. Uh, it will throw an error that recipe with this ID does not exist. I have pasted another uh, recipe ID that exists in my database and if I send the uh, request then it will return the recipe to me. So in this way the resolvers work in uh, GraphQL. Now I will explain how we can implement JWT authentication in uh, GraphQL. JWT authentication is an important feature in every web application nowadays. To show you how it works, when the user creates his new account or login uh, using his email or password, I will return a JWT token to that user. It will show me that the email is already registered, so I need to create pass a new email here. When I create a new user, it will return uh, a new token to me. I need to pass this, this token with every request. If I don't pass this token in request, uh, then, it will, then the server will not allow me to view or do any other action. For example, if I need to view or uh, get our recipes, I need to pass the token here. And this token has expiry, expiry date of 2 hours. After two hours, it will expire. Uh, it, if I will pass the correct token and then it will allow me to see uh, uh, get our recipes uh, API. But if I change my token, then it will throw the error that the user is not authenticated. I need to pass the correct uh, token here. If I don't pass the token here, then it will also allow, uh, don't allow me to uh, view our recipes. So how this, uh, this work in uh, GraphQL? In GraphQL, we need, we, there is a parameter card context that we pass in start standalone server. This context uh, act as middleware. It will be called before uh, every request where we are getting the authorization token that is our JWT token and verifying that token. If the user pass uh, the correct token, then we are allowing the user to view or uh, perform the action. But if the user did not or pass the invalid token, then we are uh, restricting the user from uh, uh, performing any action. This uh, context parameter takes an asynchronous function. I have uh, written the function is a separate file in my context folder. 
if the user is trying to create his new account or uh, uh, trying to log in using his email and password then i am not asking him to provide the jwt token and returning the empty object from there but if the user is trying to perform any other action then i am uh, uh, asking the user to provide the authorization uh, the token is the authorization header and get the user in the get user uh, function i am verifying the token by passing the token and by passing the jwt private key if the user is not valid then i am throwing the error that user is not authenticated but if the user is valid then i am throwing then i am uh, returning the uh, user object i can also uh, access this user object in all my resolvers for example the user object can be accessed in the context value that is my third parameter if i console log the context value and send my request again to get rsps you can see this user is also accessible in get rsps i can use this user object for different purposes like uh, uh, by st uh, for storing the id of the user that is creating a new recipe the id of user that is uh, getting our recipes and for other purposes as well so in this way we can implement the jwt authentication in graphql now we will look into how we can handle our errors in graphql as we know the, uh, the handling error in any application is very important i am on the apollo server website and on error handling article that will give suggest me some of the methods that i can use to handle my errors as graphql always return 200 as status code whether it is uh, throwing some error or whether it is uh, re returning some result so this is the shape of the graphql error when i throw error from any graphql uh, query by writing throw graphql error like this uh, when i throw error from any part of my code it will throw error like this with the error message and extension with the code that defines the type of error but uh, the thing to notice here is that the status score is always 200 so the client end uh, has no method to know whether it is returning a result or whether it is throwing some error and the apollo server documents uh, return, uh, suggest some of the method to handle the errors these are the built-in error codes uh, graphql parse failed validation failed that we can use if we want and this is the custom uh, handling the custom errors that i am using we can handle the graphql errors uh, customly by uh, by suggesting our own uh, method for example if the user pass a, an invalid argument we can throw the bad request uh, bad user input error similarly for all of other edit as well so let's jump into the vs code part redo the changes that i have done, just done this is the helper function a helper file that i have created that contains an object with error types where i have defined the type of error that takes uh, an object as its value uh, the object contains an error code and error status error status is the status that i am returning to the client and error code is also the code uh, that helps the user to verify whether it is error or result i have uh, written uh, some of the uh, error types for bad user input bad request not found unauthenticated already exist and internet server error this is my helper function that i am calling from different parts of my resolvers where i am passing the uh, error message and the error type and i am throwing the error from this place only let's look into my resolver where i am throwing the error in my sign up resolver if the user passed the email that already exists in my database i am calling the uh, throw custom error and pass it an error message and already exist error type so this will call this function 
and throw uh, some uh, meaningful error to the user. Let's check in the Apollo server. Move to the create user. Let's create a new user. Then as you can see, it is throwing me 400 status code and email already uh, is already uh, registered error. So the client will know that it is for 400. So it is some error and uh, uh, he or she the client can also verify from the extension dot code that it is already exist error. Similarly, we can define different error types for our use. Uh, like in login, if the user pass the invalid email or password, I am throwing bad user input error and passing a message that invalid uh, email or password entered. Similarly, in my recipe resolver, I can use this custom error function. Uh, like if the recipe does not exist, I am throwing a not found error and the recipe with ID, ID does not exist. Let me show you this. Uh, get a single recipe. So uh, if I pass the correct ID, then it will return me the recipe. But if I change this uh, recipe ID and then uh, send the request, as you can see, it is uh, sending a four, uh, 404 status code that shows that it is some kind of error. Uh, so the client will know that uh, this is an error and I have to uh, switch to some other screen. So this is how we can handle errors in GraphQL. As I have explained every part of my code, so you know what the type definitions or uh, schemas are, what the resolvers are, how we can implement the JWT authentication and what is the start standalone server. I have already explained uh, what this context folder does and how the resolvers and schemas work. So let's test the application. So it is uh, connected to MongoDB and uh, server is running at localhost 3000. Let's jump into the code sandbox. That is my Apollo server sandbox and test some of my APIs. So firstly, I need to create a new user. I need to pass something here. Some email with the first name and last name. If I click on uh, create new user, it will create a new user for me and store all the information and return a new token that is my JWT token to me. If I want to check my login route, I need to pass this email and password. So this is my email and this is my password. When I click on login, you can see it is successfully login and also return me a new token. So I need to copy this token and I can uh, perform any action in it. Like I can create a new recipe. I click on create a recipe. I need to first pass the token. If I click on uh, create recipe without passing the token, it will uh, throw an error that user is not authori authorized. I need to add a new header. That is my authorization and paste my token here. I need to pass the name and description of my new recipe like I am giving it a recipe and recipe description. When I click on create recipe, you can see the new recipe is created. I can also create a new recipe and get my ID. When I click on new recipe, it will create a new recipe and also return me the ID. I need to copy this ID and click on uh, get single recipe. I need to paste this uh, recipe here. So this is the recipe ID that I am requesting from server. I need to pass the authentication token in the authorization header and click on get a single recipe. So it will return me the recipe ID, name, description and number of thumbs up and thumbs down. I can get any number of fields like if I need only the name of recipe and the ID of recipe then I don't need to create a new endpoint for these two fields I just use this endpoint to get only the ID and name and if I need a thumbs up also I can use this endpoint to click on recipe and it will give me thumbs up 
if i want to increment my thumbs up and thumbs down i need to click on increment thumbs up first of all i need to pass the recipe id that i whose uh, thumbs up i need to increment so this is the recipe id and i also need to pass the updated jwt token let's click on uh, increment thumbs up so uh, the status is true it's mean that the thumbs up are successfully incremented let's click on uh, the get single recipe you can see the thumbs up uh, is incremented to one i can click as many times as i want i click on mm, th increment thumbs up several times and when i click on the get single recipe you can see the increment thumbs up is uh, incremented to seven similarly all these uh, endpoints are working let me show you some other endpoint for example if i need to delete this recipe i need to copy the recipe id pass it here secondly i need to copy the authorization token and pass it in authorization header when i click on a delete recipe the status is true it means the recipe is successfully deleted no when i click on the uh, the single recipe you can see it is uh, it is giving the error that recipe with this id does not exist and also the status code is 400 which means not found if you want to study any new concept of apollo server you can uh, go to the apollographql.com website and click on the document session the updated version of uh, this uh, apollo server is v4 it is also giving the v2 and v3 which are old ones but v4 is the updated version of apollo server you can study all uh, about like uh, unions uh, schema basis error handling subscription resolvers how you can handle cores how can you can handle authorization and many other concepts so that's it from the graphql uh, tutorial hope you like it thank you very much